Good morning. It's Tuesday, so it's safe. Uh, I want to say a few things about uh, Restrepias. Yes. I have been called a Restrepia grower. Well, can't say I agree, but it's an honor. Uh, I've been doing some checking and uh, I have eight species now and only one of those species uh, is a lowland species. Lowland, it doesn't grow as high as the others. And it's also the only one that doesn't mind high temperatures. I think that's the reason why it's flowering constantly. Although they all can when they want to, or when they feel like it. Uh, yeah, the, the trichoglossa comes from uh, southern Mexico. And uh, the rest all come from Venezuela and uh, Colombia and all grow very, very high up, about mm, two and a half, three kilometers high in uh, cloudy forests where it's not as warm as in Chiapas, Mexico. No, it's not. Uh, so yay, uh, yeah, we'll just have to wait to see what the rest is doing because they are, well, not that long here. But uh, <clears throat> today, this one, it's a Plutothallus and it belongs to the same group as Restrepias. And Restratias only have 50 species, this one over 300. And they come in various sizes. This big, I have one. Hold up. That's Plutothallis uh, paleolata. And, well, they have almost the same flowering habit as Plutothallis, except uh, Restrepias. Plutothallis grows on top of the leaf and Plutothallis are Restrepias under the leaf. Yeah, it's early. Uh, I make mistakes. And these also drink like camels. And I, mm, I did them on Sunday. But the day to spray every day is upon us. Yeah, yesterday evening uh, the grow room was 30 degrees, no, 31, with a humidity of 90. Yeah, it's... It's not fun being in the grow room with temperatures like that. It's even dangerous. You can, yeah, you can pass out. Some people do. I don't. Well, I haven't tested it yet, and I'm not going to. Um, Plurothalis ruskifolia. They are cool growers, and. Well, yeah, the largest species of these uh, gets six to seven feet tall. Yeah, really. And it, it's an exact copy of this one, but way larger. <coughs> this one flowers from the base of the leaf with three or four very small yellow flowers with a horrible smell which stays around the plant itself and that's a good thing 
once I do this, I can't go back. Oh, let me tell you another thing about those trepias. Uh, Roger made a few videos on the flowers. And those small antennas are called, are called osmophores. Yes. And they do attract the pollinator into the flower. And I also found out that uh, Rustrepias can't self-pollinate. They need another plant, which makes them very susceptible to uh, dying out and stuff because of habitat loss and other depressing stuff. Yes. And now I need to do something uh, instead of just talking. Uh, usually I soak the moss in my lasagna tray and I made lasagna so I can't use that. Damn. Uh, yeah, uh, hold up. Just a little while. Look at this. Fluffy. Yay! Uh, yeah, I think there are some residual effects from Monday. I never do stuff on Monday. I had to yesterday. So, I bought the repot of a nobile, of all things. Uh, I flooded my uh, shed because I forgot I was making water. Yeah, it happens. Only on Monday. This is, yeah. These need a lot of moist going on wet. Uh, that's probably the reason why it never flowered. It's just not wet enough. It's always good to bring it out. Uh, yeah, there may be some background noises. Um, I'm charging my battery and the fan is running in the grow room. So yay, that's noisy. Okay. Yeah, that's about time. Now, please be nice and stay in one piece. Yay, it's one plant. Ooh, this is all. Oh, it's flat. That does not look as awesome as I thought it would. Um, well, we're gonna find a, a better piece of cork. Does this have a plug of some sort? No, it does not. Yeah, I can't leave the bark. <clears throat> it would be very counterproductive to not get out rotting bark because this is going off. I've had this one for that's not on the label, but I had it for quite a while. You can see nice soft green roots. Now these 
I hate to dry out, but they can't take it. Same as Restrepias. Ooh, this is so annoying. Yeah, I'm almost done, guys. And I'm not going to remove any roots. Because, well, this is micro spaghetti. So you best leave it as is, unless it's really, really bad. And this isn't even a little bit bad. Roots are all good. There are some dead ones, but, well. Hey, I have a, a pointy thing. This is a division. Yes, it is. It's grown from this bit. This is the old part of the plant. And this is all brand new. Not grown here. Yeah, I'm not that good. Uh, no. Clean up on aisle five. Uh, yeah, this looks really, really silly. I'm not going to do that. Let's get something bigger. This is the active part of the plant. This is where new growth are coming. So that has to be on the front. Here's a new one coming. No, you're not gonna cut stuff off. There's no need. Just be creative and think for a little while. Uh, put your views on pause. Thank you. Yeah, I still got these big pieces, but it needs to have something like this, a niche. Now this one's too small and can't really extend it, but it, yeah, that's a bit of a... Uh, Yeah, that's an annoying habit that I want something to look like it's coming straight from the wild and this just looks stupid, really. Way too small. It needs a we need a bigger board. Well, uh, this doesn't have any niches. This one has on several places uh, I got a beautiful niche here which I can extend uh, and cutting it up like this is a big piece but yeah you see what I mean and it's not that I don't have the room to place it well I do <laughs> I don't, uh, yeah, um, if I break this, it breaks uh, the wrong way. Uh, this is a pretty niche right here. No. Yeah, this was uh, the, the mount I had uh, Sanhobia on. 
it worked for a little while and then it didn't. Yeah, it, it's really hard providing enough water for a big plant. And it wasn't even that big, I had bigger. Um, my jungle bob, for instance, which is, yeah. And my uh, seal of Tolkien, too, both on very large mounts. But they never made it through the, yeah, the move and then very dark grow room. This is also a really, really pretty spot. Could I make a community mount with the Paleolata? Well, yeah. Uh, I, it, I really need fresh cork. I have a lot left, but it's all flat and not attractive. I wish I had cedar driftwood, really. That stuff looks really, really great. Uh, Rick uses it for just about everything. And yeah, that stuff we can't get here. Yeah, probably, but really, really expensive in some uh, stupid uh, art and design and living now shops and uh, um, yeah, I'm rambling. Um, you know what? Uh, I'm gonna take some creativity and think about this. See you in a moment. Okay, uh, I wrecked a big chunk and made a few holes and now first moss and lots of it. Now, this one can soak. This is not nearly enough, but let's see what we got. Are we rolling? Yes, we is. Uh, Again, I'm not going to bury it under the moss. I'm gonna give it a... a slight covering. Not too much. Because these roots will never burrow into the, into the moss. And this is not a species that grips wood. They live in moss. The young roots, however, will go into the moss. Uh -huh. And if you keep this moss wet, algae will start to grow and quite possibly ferns and stuff because I don't treat the moss, it is used as is. Okay, uh, <clears throat> yeah, here's the You can see here, there's a 
a woody piece, this. This is what started it all. There, this piece. And we have need ver need to be very careful. Well, there's the new growth. And that's basically all it does. Ah, two new growth. And the onset of another one, three. Yeah. <clears throat> Old piece to the back. And now comes the hard part. Uh, I'm gonna attach it with the old part, which is always fun. Mm, yes, that was a euphemism. Uh. There we go. We. Well, it's. And I don't want it too tight. It just doesn't have to fall off. I can string up the, the roots with wire, a uh, fishing line in a moment, but I'm going to remove some moss from here because that will cause problems. And there we go. Uh, Just a few individual pieces. And that's basically enough. Is it? Yeah, yes it is. Trust me. Um, don't bury the new growth. There we go. Uh, <clears throat> now it will arch over in a moment. I'm not gonna do that now because I will wreck everything. And remember, Tuesday is only post Monday. Yeah, it's always a risk. Fishing line and lots of it. The only worry now is that it probably going to arch over way too far. Which means I can do it all over again. It also proves my uh, post Monday point. I 
can't do this too tight because it will cut into the roots and we don't want that okay the moment supreme yes are we there yet okay now uh da -da. Da -da. Ta da okay you can stay uh, yeah I'm going to do this uh, the difficult way because yeah if I hold it completely upside down it will fall breaking growth and twigs and sticks and that's not what we want. My new knot is amazing, really. It never comes free. But, hope. Oh. We're still going to do that three times because three is the magic number. It really is. Uh, we we. And another one. Yeah, sure. Why not? This is uh, a knot of my own design. I have no idea if it existed before this or what it's called, if it did. Okay. Da, da, da. Oh yeah. Now, uh, it can do one of two things. And that is grow or die. Well, we're going to find that out eventually. Does it have a tag? Yes, it has. Um, well, I think you've seen it now. Okay. A post-Monday mount. Later.